lines, meaning they produce one mature flush. That doesn't mean that if we cut it off, we don't get bud. One mature flush, right? They won't produce a second mature flush that we can depend on year after year after year, okay? Hmm. There's two major ways that we develop single growth pines, okay? I'm gonna give you the calendar of how we develop them out of the mountains because so many of us are working with Yamadori. And then I'm gonna go through how we develop something that's reestablished, okay? Year one, out of the mountains, okay? Assuming we get a good root system, assuming it's a, a, a collector that had a good collect, right, got a good root system, they're conscious about what they do, they have good aftercare. Assuming we have a good root system and we see, we see growth, okay? We see new needles emerge. Because sometimes we can get a very small root system and the tree says, this root system can only sustain what I've got. I don't have the root system to support the addition of more needles, okay? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold off. I'm going to use the photosynthetic material from the needles I have to generate a root system that can now facilitate growth next year, right? And we'll see those buds change color in the fall, showing us that we have that health that's come back because we didn't see growth, okay? So that's the second situation. If you see that, then this year one can become year two for those trees, okay? So just make that adaptation in your mind. If we see growth, if the tree pushes needles, we know that it has a root system capable of adding more foliage, right? It can support that with moisture and nutrition. See visual growth. Our goal is to fertilize, to develop what? What in the first year? What are we developing? Roots. roots, roots. Fertilize to develop roots, okay? So when we say fertilize to develop roots, we fertilize, we had this tree that came out of the mountains, had very short needles, right? Very short needles, and we said, oh, this must be some genetic freak. It has the shorter needles than I've ever seen before. I want to make sure that these needles stay super short, right? And we start to fertilize, and we see these needles get excessively long. We're saying, wait, I thought I had a genetic, uh, uh, you know, deviation from the normal tree and I had these super short needles and now they're super long, right? When we fertilize to develop roots, fertilization elongates our needle length. We all know that, right? Why do we want that? What does that mean? Longer needles means what? Healthier tree. Healthier tree, why? Okay, the roots are feeding it, but what are the foliage doing for the roots? Photosynthesis, very good. When we fertilize to develop roots, we want long needles. Long needles means more solar panel. More solar panel means more food created. More food created means faster reproduction of roots. Faster reproduction of roots means faster replenishment and addition of growth. Got it? Okay. Fertilize to develop roots. Year two. <coughs> so when I say fertilize, we're saying spring, spring, fall, spring, spring, fall. Fertilize to develop what? What? Still the roots. Develop what? Still the roots. Still the roots? So let's assume that in one year we were able to develop a, a plethora of roots. Those roots will continue to develop. We know that. Second year we're fertilizing for a very different goal though. Foliage? Foliage. Alright? So we may have had a minimal or a less than stellar production of foliage here because we didn't have quite that established root system. We develop those roots, we get those roots underneath us. Now we're fertilizing to develop foliage, okay? In this year, if we fertilize heavily in the spring through the summer, good care, good sun, we should see... Visible back buddy begins, okay? We'll see the fruits of our labor. If we fertilize, we sacrifice needle length, we get long needles here, we say, the heck with it, I want even longer needles here. Photosynthesis, energy moving, all of those tips are being strong, the roots are replenished. By the fall of this year, we'll see visible back budding, right? Visible signs of back budding. trying to fertilize the drive. Every every four weeks. Sure, every four every four to six. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Every four to six weeks. Yep. 
Okay, every four to six weeks, organic fertilizer. So now we're saying fertilize to develop in year three. We saw the signs of back budding. We've got good, strong roots. We've got a lot of foliage developed. We're getting back budding. Fertilizing for what in year three? Okay, very good. To develop the back budding into foliage. Okay, so if we see this back budding and we say, hooray, we've arrived. We got there. We're good. Good to go. All right. Let's style this thing, cut off half the branches, wire it up, repot it, boom. Do these back buds actually ever become something? Maybe some of them do, a small percentage of them do, but the majority won't. What's that? Yeah, there you go. Okay. Just buds. They're just buds. Yeah. Right. Right. Back to year one. Okay. So if we if we actually take one more year to develop those buds, we're expediting the process of creating a tree. Okay. Because we're getting the foliage mass in year three by developing those back buds, fertilizing to actually have that dense canopy that we've been striving for, that we look for, that a mature tree has. Right. Sacrifice the time now on the front end so that when you get to that year five, six, seven in development, you're just building and building and building. It becomes almost an exponential increase in foliage mass, right? But if you don't do this now, then you're going to get back to year one, and now you've got to sacrifice two to three more years just to get back to that foliage mass that allows that exponential increase in foliage, okay? This is how you expedite the process of making a tree showable in a very short amount of time. Right? Mr. Kamara was an expert at this. He did this very, very well. He left excessive amounts of foliage. He left excessive amounts of branches so that each year those branches fed the building of the branches he wanted to keep. He got trees to a showable state two to three years, four to five years faster than anybody else could because he understood every branch feeds every other branch on that tree. Every piece of foliage feeds every other piece of foliage on that tree. Okay? Particularly when it comes to pines. Very different with junipers. When it comes to pines, exceptionally so. Okay? So now we're saying fall of year three, we're looking to style. Okay? Year four, spring, possibly repot if we want to. Okay? If we have a healthy tree, we style it in the fall, say October. Uh, September, October, we style, tree grows well through the fall, we've got a lot of foliage mass built up, now we can start to repot in the spring, we're in year four, we could be looking at even showing this tree in year five, it's possible, very possible. Five years out of the mountain, showable tree, right? Very rarely is that achievable, okay? Not a bad thing to strive for, not a bad thing to strive for, okay? We good here? Methods of training. Okay, very different application if we're in refinement versus in development. Okay? So we're gonna assume in refinement we've got branches that now have a silhouette that we know we're trying to maintain now have some definition that we're trying to continue on or maintain, okay? When we're talking about refinement, we're talking about pinching. Pinching, okay? Pinching meaning we're always leaving some portion of the new growth that occurs that year, okay? But we're removing some portion of it to maintain the shape or allocate energy towards interior buds we're hoping to develop, all right? So when we see these, these shoots, these candles elongate the spring, we're going to pinch these off within our silhouette to maintain shape. Now we know we have to leave at least a few pairs of needles on each new piece of growth in order to maintain buds at that location and viability of this shoot. Okay? So if we pinch off all the new growth, and we get a bud back here and we say, oh, it's okay because we got a bud back there. No, it's not okay. It's not okay because you worked to get this branch to this point. You screwed it up because you pinched it all off. Now you've got a bud here and you're going to have to wait another year or two for that to catch up to everything else, right? Accuracy. A little bit of accuracy, okay? Now when we pinch these, right, 
There's a bud at the tip of each one of these. In that bud, there's a hormone. Does anybody know what that hormone is called? It's called oxen. Oxen. What does oxen do? Oxen suppresses growth of buds below that bud. Okay? So each one of these buds has aspirations of being the apex of the tree, right? It thinks it's going to be a big, long branch someday. And it wants to grow as long and tall as it possibly can. So in this bud is this hormone which suppresses growth of the buds of any branch below that, okay? The second that we pinch this off, all of a sudden that oxen is removed, and now this bud has the chance to grow. So now it elongates, right? So we'll go in and we'll pinch this at our silhouette, okay? We'll pinch that. And if we have a really vigorous tree, we may have an even third production of buds and we can pinch those. In Japan, we would get, we have to do this three times. Three times on Zoetia white pines, okay? So now we've got our silhouette. We know that we've removed the oxen that allows lateral buds to grow. We pinch the lateral buds. Hopefully we get a third bud growing. This is how we maintain is how we maintain or develop a branch and develop density. If you don't pinch this, if you let this grow and cut, you're going to get more back buds. Do we need more back buds? That's a decision. That's refinement versus development. If you need more back buds, then you're going to let grow, and we'll talk about that. But if you're refining, if you're trying to get this pad to fill out in density, you're trying to create this silhouette, try to create that definition, you have to pinch to allow the smaller buds to elongate to the exterior portion of the silhouette, or you'll never get there. Got it? We good? Okay, in development, as opposed to pinching, we're cutting, okay? We're cutting, so we just talked about, we remove that oxen, we get growth of lateral buds. If we allow these to elongate, so let's say in development, we've got several branches, right? And we have collected Scots pine that some of, well, all the ones in here have good ramifications, yeah? So we had some really long spindly guys, right? And you've got one bud out at the end of this long branch, and this is gonna produce this big, long candle. Okay. If we pinch this, there is no bud back here that we're trying to take the oxen effect off of so that it can elongate. It would be counterproductive to sit here and pinch this. Right? Now we know with Scott's Pine they're vigorous enough if you pinch it you'll probably get back budding anyways. But is it going to be good, strong back budding that will develop into branching? Probably not. Or it will take several years. In order to maximize your time, we're going to allow this to grow. We're going to allow these needles to open up. So remember how we were talking with the black pine? We allow the, the candle to grow, to open up, and we cut it off before it's fully mature, right? So the tree is still weak. So if we allow this to grow, elongate, open up, harden off, and reaccumulate energy, regain the energy that was spent to produce this flush of growth, okay? So we let this harden off, let these needles elongate, reaccumulate energy, and then we come in here and we cut always leaving a few pairs of needles. Always leaving a few pairs of needles. That's when we start to get back bite. Okay? That's when we get back bite. So we said, if you want a black pine to back bud, you don't cut it. Let it grow. Energy is generated. Energy to roots, resources to the tip. Energy to the roots, resources to the tip. And through that, we get back budding. It's the same with the single season species, except for if we don't cut, it's very difficult to get them to want to back button. Okay? When we cut, we take that hormone off of here, we've got all that energy moving, they find a new location, and they will butt right here where we cut. Okay? So the prime time to do this mid-May. Mid-May to mid-June. Right? Prime time to make this cut. Let it grow out, let it harden off, let it photosynthesize, reaccumulate energy, cut and get back budding. All right? So once we've gotten this back budding, we're going to fertilize to facilitate development of these back buds, sacrifice needle length for another year, right? We're fertilizing to drive this. When we're in refinement, we're not going to be fertilizing as heavy anymore. We don't want these to elongate. We have a healthy tree. We have strength being balanced. If we fertilize rampantly, all of a sudden the tree's going to take off and look like this again. That defeats the purpose, right? So in the United States, for our North American pines, we don't fertilize in the spring once we get to refinement level. We don't. We won't give them fertilizer until after they've elongated and hardened off, right? 
Now, if you're trying to develop this, if you're trying to drive this, then you do need to fertilize. So it depends on what your application is. Right? Maintenance, development, refinement. Any questions? All right, I can see you guys glazing over. We're done. Those are here if you want to look at them. Let's uh, take just a quick break and then come back and let's look at everybody's trees that we're working on today, figure out how we're going to handle the work that we have at hand, and, uh, and get down to it. Okay.